The B-24 Liberator, the heavy bomber that flew farther, carried more bomb load, and along with the B-17, was the backbone of the United States Air Force during World War II. Her exploits and accomplishments are legendary, but you likely know all of that. However, do you know the details, the forgotten history? Well, in this video, we will dive into the records, test your knowledge, and uncover what you likely never knew about the B-24 Liberator. Have you ever wondered if you had unknown relatives that served in World War II? Well, thanks to this video's partner, MyHeritage, you can finally find out. MyHeritage is the leading global service for family history research and DNA testing. And with their massive database, you can start your family tree and uncover all sorts of history. For example, a couple of years ago, I found out that one of my relatives flew in a B-24 and was actually shot down. I only discovered this through records like the ones on MyHeritage. But in addition, I also love to use it for research on pilots and crew members as well. Sometimes I need a little bit more info, so I go to their database of 19 billion records, start searching, and uncover a world of information. Like this. Here is a famous B-24 pilot that's in this video, and here is a census from 1930 when he was just 17 years old, telling me his family members, his age, and his location. Also, one of my favorite features is that as you add old photographs and build your tree, MyHeritage has technology that colorizes and enhances them instantly. They are simply the best. So don't wait, sign up for a 14-day free trial and enjoy all the amazing features of MyHeritage. And after that, you'll get a 50% discount with my link. Thanks again to MyHeritage and now enjoy. To start this video, we will go straight to the beginning of the war for the United States, 1941. And while the B-24 did serve for the RAF first, we will be covering the first B-24 that was destroyed in the war under the command of the United States Army. Most of you are aware that the B-24 was designed in the late 1930s and was specifically to be an asset to the U.S. Army Air Corps as a long-range heavy bomber, similar to the B-17. And after being selected and approved, we also know that she entered service for the U.S. Army in mid-1941. But where was her first loss from combat? Let's see if you know the answer as we arrive at question number one. Where was the very first American B-24 destroyed in World War II? A. Pearl Harbor B. Wake Island C. The Battle of Midway or D. North Africa The correct answer here is actually A. The Attack on Pearl Harbor this is a very obscure story in the Day of Infamy because there were simply so many other more important storylines and losses that overshadowed this fact. But the story is that the first American Liberator lost to the enemy was on December 7th of 1941. This would be the famous aircraft of Ted Faulkner. In the days before Pearl Harbor, late November to be specific, the United States commanders were beginning to get suspicious of the Japanese. There were a great deal of communications and fleet movements taking place throughout the Pacific, and many suspected that the Japanese would likely attack the Philippines if peace talks in Washington collapsed. So, to try and get better intelligence on what was actually going on, a top-secret spy mission was ordered. This mission was a photo reconnaissance flight that would take place over the Philippine region, hoping to get crucial information on troop buildups, fleet locations, and other strategic intel of the Japanese. Here, we can actually see one of the classified documents relating to this mission, a message from Admiral R.K. Turner to the famous General Henry Hap Arnold. The main body reads, with regard to the photographic mission of the two B-24 airplanes flying to the Philippines this week, photographs and recon of Jalu and truck are desired in order to ascertain numbers and location of ships, submarines, airfields, aircraft, guns, barracks or camps, and other important military features. 
However, in the days that followed, only one of the B-24s would make it to Hawaii as scheduled on December 5th, with the other having engine trouble. This would be the Liberator flown by Ted Faulkner and his crew. They were forced to wait a couple of days in Pearl Harbor for some upgrades to be made to their plane. So on December 7th of 1941, Faulkner and his crew were actually getting ready for a test flight in their B-24, which was parked by a hangar at Hickam Field. At this moment, early in the morning, the very first bomb dropped on Pearl Harbor and landed close by, destroying a hangar and catching their Liberator on fire. In addition, their navigator was killed instantly in this blast, one of the very first casualties of the attack. Also, later on in the morning, another one of Faulkner's crew members would be killed in a strafing run by a Japanese fighter. Here, we can see one of the photos of the burned out B-24 in front of the bombed hangar at Hickam Field of Pearl Harbor. After the attack, this would obviously end the plans for their spy mission, and the Americans would not be able to photograph the Philippines for another two years. But also, this would be the very first American B-24 Liberator destroyed in World War II. Up next, we will discuss one of the more unique features of the B-24, its Bombay doors. But before we get to this question, let's throw in another question related to what exactly went into the Bombay. So question two, what was the maximum payload of the B-24? A, 5,000 pounds, B, 6,500 pounds, C, 8,000 pounds, or D, 11,000 pounds? The right answer here is C, 8,000 pounds, which was well more than that of the B-17 at the time. And this brings us back to the original question, why the strange Bombay? When we look at the B-17, the B-29, and many of the other strategic bombers of the time, very few had this roller-type door. This is because the B-24, unlike most aircraft of the time, featured a tricycle undercarriage, meaning that there was no wheel in the tail, so the bomber rested level on the ground rather than on its tail wheel. Due to this, when the B-24's large belly sat on the runway or in a hangar, the traditional bomb bay doors would be unable to open and bombs could not be loaded. So instead, a roller-style bomb bay door allowed a payload to be loaded from the ground. But as an added bonus, it was also more aerodynamic over the target. And since generally, bomber crews wanted to be over the target for as short a time as possible, this was a major asset, as compared to the B-17, which was slowed slightly when bomb bay doors were opened. But grounds crews were not necessarily always filling these bomb bays with standard bombs. In fact, one of the most successful roles of the B-24 Liberator was something completely different. Let's see if you know what that was. Question number three, what was one of the most important roles that the B-24 served in World War II outside of high altitude bombing? A, low level strafing, B, anti-submarine, C, dropping paratroopers, or D, the testing of the atom bomb? The correct answer here is B, the anti-submarine role. This would be one of the most crucial and overlooked jobs of the heavy bombers in World War II. Now, most of us know that the German U-boats wreaked havoc on Allied shipping in the first few years of World War II. Part of this would be because the Royal Air Force lacked aircraft with the necessary range to patrol the vast areas of the Atlantic Ocean. Radar was prominently used in this time to locate submarines, but it really didn't matter if they lacked an aircraft that could fly far enough to strike them. And this is where the B-24 came in. Before the United States ever even entered the war, the B-24 was being sent to the British to fulfill this role. Because of its range, which was much farther than any other aircraft at the Brits' disposal, it was the obvious choice. And as soon as the Liberator was given this assignment with Coastal Command, the results were immediate. 
U-boats that were previously safe began to find themselves under attack from the air, with multiple U-boats sunk in the very first months of operations. As developments in radar and anti-submarine weapons continue to improve over the coming months, by the time 1943 arrived, RAF's Coastal Command, with the help of the B-24, had officially turned the tide in the Atlantic, putting the German U-boat arsenal on its heels and allowing supplies to flow freely across the Atlantic Ocean. But not every story in the Liberator is quite this positive. In fact, the B-24 did have its weaknesses, like any other aircraft, and one of these very shortcomings will be the next item on our list. So, what was one of the key weaknesses of the B-24 that caused higher losses in combat? A. Slower combat speed B. More exposed cockpit C. Weaker wings or D. Poor defensive armament the unfortunate answer would be C, the wings. This was because of one key feature, the outward folding landing gear. When we look at both the B-29 and the B-17, we can see that the main landing gear actually fold up into one of the engines. But the B-24 had gear that folded outwards into the actual wing itself. Because of this, some of the strength of the wing actually had to be lessened to accompany the space for the gear. This resulted in a slightly more vulnerable wing area on the Liberator, especially if it was hit by flak. This can clearly be seen from the high number of B-24 photos and videos that show wings collapsing and blowing off of the aircraft. These photos are far more common with the Liberator than any other plane of World War II. The additionally lethal aspect of this weakness was that it made it almost impossible for crews to bail out. Some weaknesses, like the water-cooled engine of the P-51 or the faulty engines of the B-29, actually still allowed crews to escape even if disaster struck. After all, with an engine lost, you can still glide the aircraft and safely exit the plane. But if a wing collapsed, there was essentially no way to escape, with the immediate G-forces making it almost impossible to exit the plane. This would be one of the few vulnerabilities of the B-24 Liberator, and especially in the early years over Europe, led to many losses for the American air crews. For the final point in today's video, we will cover one of the more unknown stories of the B-24's history, the captured German Liberators. For question number five, we will actually test some German aviation knowledge. So let's see if you can get it. What was the name of the German Special Operations Unit that flew captured enemy aircraft? A, JG-52, B, JG-2, C, KG-40, or D, KG-200. This special unit would be D, Kampfdeswager 200. And while there were actually three different B-24s captured by the Germans and utilized by KG-200 in the war, I will tell you about one in particular that has a truly fascinating story. On March 29th of 1944, a bomber of the 449th Bomb Group took off from southern Italy to bomb a key Axis target. This B-24 would be named Sunshine. On the way to the target, Sunshine would have engine trouble and began losing altitude. Her crew was then forced to turn for neutral Switzerland. But as they approached the border, they lost a second engine and began losing altitude even faster. Eventually, they just barely made it and landed at a Swiss airfield. Or so they thought. Upon landing, the crew of Sunshine was shocked when Italian soldiers approached them and took them prisoner. In reality, they had not made it to Switzerland, but had landed three minutes short of the border, in fascist Italy. The crew of Sunshine would go on to be POWs, and their bomber was sent to KG-200 for testing and study. Here we can see the crew in a posed video for German propaganda after the bomber landed, 
as well as this photo, which has a German soldier and an Italian officer in American flying clothes looking at the bomber. After it was sent to KG-200, Sunshine was utilized in covert operations, penetrating Allied bomber formations and acting as a stealth aircraft. She would serve this role until a tragic fate in April of 1945. On this date, on a simple ferry flight from Bavaria for KG-200, Sunshine would be shot down by German anti-aircraft gunners. They were unaware that she was being flown by the Luftwaffe and this would be the end of Sunshine's story. So how many questions did you get right? Comment down below and let's see what you know. If you enjoyed this video, please consider supporting me on Patreon so I can continue to make more. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.